And good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We certainly thank God for allowing us the privilege and the pleasure of being with you on this beautiful day. Uh, we thank God for the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us, and we pray that everything is well in your life and well in your soul. I'd like to talk with you this morning on a very important subject in our life, and that is the subject of power. Uh, and we look all around us uh, today and we uh, see power working in the lives and the operation of our country and in the operation of our homes and, and everything we have to deal with in life that is affected by a certain type of power. And, but I want you to know that we as children of God, that we are not powerless. We have power. We have the power that is within us. In Acts, the first chapter and verses number eight, it tells us concerning about the power that we have. It said, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. It said, ye shall have, or uh, you shall receive power. And it's talking about power that mankind had never experienced dwelling with him in him in his lifetime until the Holy Ghost of, came into our lives on the day of Pentecost. And we have this power within, in, within us, and we have to utilize it for the glory and benefit of God. Then he tells us in the text what our job is and what we shall do with the power that he has given to us. He said, ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. In other words, God wants us to tell his redemption story. Tell his redemption story in all of the world. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And if you have the Holy Spirit in you, there is no reason to despair, no reason to whine, no reason to complain or wonder concerning what is going to happen to me in my life. How am I ever going to get through this, whatever this is in your life? And, and, and I thank God that he's there always to help us to get through the trials and tribulations of our life. But we need to understand and realize that we have a power source inside of us. Now, when I was growing up, uh, there was a cartoon character and his name was called Popeye. Popeye the sailor, and when he needed strength, he popped open a can of spinach, and miraculously, his muscles expanded and his courage exploded. Popeye was then able to physically conquer anything in his way because he had confidence in his spinach. Popeye is an imaginary cartoon character, but we as Christians have a real power source that we can tap into in our times of great needs in our life. We have the power of the Holy Spirit abiding in us and operating through us. The Holy Spirit will confront persecution. It will confront our fierce enemies. We have a supernatural power residing within us. And and, and, and it would help us to battle the, the hate. Amen. We use him as our supernatural power to provide love in difficult situation to those who seemingly are unlovable. And when we are facing temptations, believers have spiritual discipline through the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives. With the Holy Spirit, living inside of us, we are strong. We are filled with love and we are able to live a disciplined life. And we oftentimes forget 
who resides on the inside of us. And if you want to live an extraordinary life, allow the Holy Spirit to have full reign in your life. See, the Holy Spirit gives us power to forgive our enemy. It gives us power to deal with our confused neighbors. And even when they are stoning you the way they stone Caesar, Stephen, we'll be able to forgive them and say, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. We have power to bless those who curse you and Pray for those who despitefully use you. You have power to do things you never dreamed about doing because you're not willing to doing them under your own power. You can't do it under your own power, but you can under the power and unction of the Holy Spirit. You have power to smile when your heart is heavy, to laugh when you, when you feel like crying, to serve when you don't feel like serving. To pray when you sometimes don't feel like praying. You have power because God's Holy Spirit is residing inside of you. You see, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit gives you the power to get up and do, and do while others around you are sitting around talking about what can't be done. The Holy Spirit refers us to Philippians 4 and 13 when doubt creeps in to your mind. And it states, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit refers us to John 16 and 33 when a seed of pity is trying to grow in our hearts. And it says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye may have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Isn't that comforting to know that even though we're going through trying times in our life, and even though we're facing test and temptation, that the Lord is with us, abiding inside of us, and we can smile even though things are going wrong around us because he has overcome the world. And if we function within his power, within his knowledge and his wisdom, we can overcome the difficult things in our life. As a matter of fact, he tells us, cast all your cares upon me for I care for you. God can handle stuff that we just can't deal with. The Holy Spirit tells us, amen, if we take a peek into Ephesians, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 10, when we're having health problems in our life, and every one of us have gone through, or, or we are going through some type of health problems. And he said unto me, this is Paul speaking, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. When I turn it over to the Lord, the power of Christ rests upon me. He pours his mercy and his grace upon me. When I can't walk, he carries me through the storm of life. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. When we submit our trials and tribulations to him, when we admit that we can't handle this stuff, he functions in our weakness and makes us strong enough to handle a difficult situation through his power, his power, his mercy, and his grace. See, the Holy Spirit encourages us to seek guidance in our life in the word of God. 
when our money gets funny and our change gets strange and it seems like you just can't get over the humps in life, our spirit guide tells us to look at Psalms, the first chapter, verse number one through three. And these words are recorded. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. In other words, he has his mind on God. He has his mind on Jesus Christ. He's meditating on the things of God. And the scripture text says next, and he shall, not maybe, but he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. God's got a blessing with your name on it. We just have to hang in there and wait till our season comes to fruition. What does the Holy Spirit do? Some of you may ask in your life. Well, first of all, he reproves the world in John 16 and 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. In other words, he's telling the world that you're wrong about it. You're wrong in the way you're trying to live your life. God has a better way. God has a way that you can be happy, joyous, and prosper in. And that way is abiding in him. He reproves the world. He tells the world of his wrongness. He teaches. John 14 to 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, not some things, but all things, and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That voice of wisdom that you hear whispering in your ears on a daily basis. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you and being your spiritual guide concerning the right and wrongs of this world. And when he wants you to go left, he whispers go left, even though the world and your mind and the flesh is saying go to the right. We need to listen to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit trying to direct our path in life. And when we yield to him, he will direct us into everything that brings joy and happiness in our lives and that brings glory to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Whatsoever I have said unto you, the Comforter will teach you those things. Our job is to learn and to embrace the teaching of the Holy Spirit and his unction. The Spirit speaks in Galatians 4 and 6. And because you are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He's telling us that we can cry out to God. He speaks to us and tells us that we have an advocate who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He speaks to us because we are part of his family. And a father knows his children. And father knows best. The Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Romans 8 and 26 states, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercessions for us with groaning which cannot 
be utter. See, we we oftentimes we ask for stuff that's not really needed at that point in time in our life. We ask God to do things that are not necessary. So the Holy Spirit takes what's really needed in our life and he conveys that as our prayer to God the Father and God the Son. See, we don't know. We don't know how to pray right without the intercessions of the Holy Spirit. We don't know what to ask for without him inter interceding on our behalf. We don't know who, what, who, what, when, and where. Uh, amen. We need to go in life without the intercession of the Holy Spirit in our life. He knows what we need at every second and every minute of our lives. And he makes intercessions on our behalf to God the Father. So even though we think that this is the thing that we need in our life, the Holy Spirit knows what's really needed, and he carries those aspirations and thoughts to God on our behalf. And he does it in a manner and in a way that we cannot understand how or how to utter it. So I thank God for the inter intercession of the Holy Spirit in my life. It was times in my life I, I tried to pray about difficult situations and and. and and I, I got in a situation where I was like Hannah. I, I, I could, the words just wouldn't come out. And, but I knew that the Spirit of God residing in me, he was telling God what I really needed and what I wanted in my life, even though I couldn't express it verbally myself. We have a power that's within inside of us that we need to release that we need to submit to at all times. And that is the power that's within us. And that is the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit also leads us, Romans 8 and 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I know that you had times in your life and periods and periods of your life that you just didn't know in what direction to turn. You didn't know who to go to and 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 who could help you with your troubles. But the Bible said that the Holy Spirit will lead us in everything in our life to the proper place, the proper person at the proper time. So let's listen to our spirit guide and let him lead us and clear the path in our lives that we ha can have success and bring glory to God. And not only that, the, the Holy Spirit, he appoints men to specific tasks and specific services to perform, be performed on God's behalf and to bring glory to God. The Holy Spirit said unto Paul, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work wherever, whereunto I have called them. I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. In other words, God calls each one of us for a priority purpose, and that's to uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share his word and the witness of him. But he gives all of us a spiritual uh, a task uh, in our lives. He gives us spiritual gifts, things that only we can accomplish in our guide, in our lives, and by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He said, take heed therefore into yourself and to all the flock over which the Lord, the Holy Ghost, over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. God has individuals that 
are good at a lot of things and, and some are better uh, than others. Some are, have the ability to, to be encouragers. They, they are able to talk with individuals and encourage them and help them through their difficult uh, times in life. Some oftentimes call them counselors. Uh, other individuals have administrative skills that they're really good at, that they can be good at ministers and in the various ministries in church. We have individuals that have skills and singing skills and abilities that they can sing songs and that will uh, encourage and, and lift uplift us spiritually with the words of those songs. We have musicians who are gifted and, and talented and, uh, that have abilities that God have given to them to uh, bring glory to him and bring uh, encouragement to the family and the body of Christ. There's various gifts that God appoints men uh, to have specific services that he's given to them for the uplifting and the building up of the body of Christ. Let the Holy Spirit use that service in you to accomplish God's purpose in his kingdom building. Don't sit down on what God has, uh, he appoints you to do and he's given you the ability. Don't hide it up under a bushel, but use it for his glory and for the encouragement of man, that you might bring light in their life, that you may bring encouragement and help uh, them through uh, whatever they may be going through in this mean and cruel world. The Spirit himself is subject to appointment. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. See, God the Father, uh, he had the Spirit testifying of Jesus Christ. He testifies of who Jesus is. He testifies of who God is. So he himself was appointed for a special duty, and that is to testify of Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Father, God, in their various functions in our lives. So we thank God for the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit ministers. He regenerates, John 3 and 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. He brings us from uh, what we were unto who God wants us to be. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. That's called regeneration. We are not the same anymore. We were born of the flesh, but when we receive Jesus Christ, we are born of his spirit, and his spirit dwells within us, and we are allowed the spirit, the privilege to direct our path to accomplish God's purpose in our life. He regenerates. He seals. Ephesians 4 and 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. God has his stamp upon all of those who belong to them, belong to him. We belong to God. Now, we have his seal of, of approval, his seal of belonging. We are his property, and nobody can take us away from God. We have the seal of God's ownership upon our lives when we become children of God. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. The moment we say, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And the word of God, Jesus said, no man can pluck them out of my hand. 
they belong to me forever. We have the seal of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And because we are sons and daughters of God, should not we act like that we are the sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that he reigns, and that we are the children. We are the children of the greatest person in the universe. Should we not try to bring honor and glory to his name? Next, he also baptized. First Corinthians 9, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 states, for, one, for by one spirit, all, we all baptize into one body, one body, whether we are Jews or Gentiles, whether we are bond or free, and have been all made to drink unto one spirit. We all belong to one body, with Jesus Christ is the head of this body. And that's what we have to understand, that that we are part of the family of God. We are part of the body of Christ. And when one hurts, all hurts. And we ought to support one another with all of our energy and all of our resources. When one has a need, we ought to be able to try to meet that need of the individual. Let's not be selfish and, meet, and, and, and think only about ourselves and our own physical bodies. Let's think about the spiritual body of Christ that has many, many members that we ought to be supportive of. And we're not to pick and choose who we are to support. If there is a need, if a brother or sister is downtrodden, we ought to help them. We ought to pick them up and to help them in the best of our abilities. Because what? We're baptized into one body. We are one. No one is greater than the other. We all are important functioning in the body. If someone, amen, step on your toe, even though it's one of the lowest extreme extremities in the body, then when you feel that pain all the way through your body, from the toe all the way up to your head, pain is felt. So we need to realize that every member of our body is important. And let's look at brothers and sisters and not uh, think of them as being beneath or below. We all are on the same level in Jesus Christ. We're striving toward perfection in him. And we all are believers. We all are new creation, his new creation. And we all are imperfect beings trying to live a life that God would be pleased with. So let's not look down on one another. And what you do for one, that's my policy. If I do it for one, I'm going to do it for all. For God is not a respecter of person. He baptizes us into one body. And every member of the body is just as important as the other. He fills us, Ephesians 5 and 18, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when he's talking about feeling, that's talking about that we have the Holy Spirit in us. But when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, and any time you have a, a glass of water or you have a cup and you pour water into it, it is not filled up until that water uh overflows the cup. The cup controls the water and it feels it feel when it reaches the very top and overflows. When the Holy Spirit is in total control of our lives, well then that's what it means by feel with or controlled by the Holy Spirit. And oftentimes we, we allow the Holy Spirit some areas uh, in our lives. He will allow him to occupy some room, but sometimes we have closets and sometimes we have rooms that uh, off limits to the Holy Spirit and he doesn't have free reign in our life. Let us give him full access so he can control all of us rather than some parts of our mind. 
He fills us. He wants to control us. So don't be drunk with wine or, or selfishness and, and lucid behavior, but be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And you will do and you will be all that God wants you to be in life. And he can use you greatly to accomplish his purpose in this world. The Holy Spirit speaks to our heart on a continual basis. Our task is to hear him and follow his direction. This is where his power rises or falls in our life because some will refuse his guidance and reject his power and they will suffer the consequences of their disobedience. The Bible speaks of grieving and quenching the Holy Spirit. And that grieve means to cause the Spirit to have strong indignation, to be angry because of the sin that we have not rejected in our life. And we grieve the Spirit when we allow sin to enter into our life. The Holy Spirit tells us no, but we overrule him and we do it anyway. And that brings chastisement and punishment into our lives because we made a decision to grieve the Holy Spirit and say no to him. The second thing is that we quench sometime the Holy Spirit in our life. And that word quench means to extinguish, to override, and to disregard. And I've seen people sometime in, in the worship service, I I, I, I've seen that some would be really enjoying themselves and clapping their hands and saying, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And, and they're all into the service and, and all into the word of God until they look around to the left or right and, and they see somebody looking at them. And all of a sudden they lose some of the passion that they had before. They put a little water on the fire. They tamp it down a little bit, whereas they won't be derided by individuals who think what they were doing was improper or uh, they were overdoing something. We ought to let the Holy Spirit have full reign in our lives. Don't override what he tells you. If he lays upon your heart to give an individual a hundred dollars, don't allow the little voices in your head to tell you not to, to do what the Spirit says. Because God can take that hundred dollars and he can bless it far above anything that you would have done with it initially. See, God wants to bless us, but he wants us to be a blessing to others. So don't allow individuals or don't allow circumstances and, 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 and things to override what the Holy Spirit is doing in our life. Let him fulfill all that he wants to do in you. And sometimes my brothers and sisters, we say, man, I went to church and I, I had $200 when I left. Uh, I didn't have but 10 I've gone to church sometimes and I, I've had at least that much. And when I left church, I didn't have any. But a funny thing happened. Sometime that evening or the next day, somebody drop an envelope or someone sends me something uh, in the mail or I find out that I've got a check or, or, or something has happened that has put money in my pocket. When you trust and allow the Holy Spirit to have full reign in your life. God has greater blessings than you ever had before because of your obedience. Let it overflow. God blessed us 
amen, to overflow into the lives of others. He blessed us with plenty to pour into other individuals to help them in their time of need. So don't grieve nor quench the Holy Spirit. Let him have his full reign in your life. And, and when the Spirit of God is grieved in a believer, the fellowship guidance, the instruction and power of the Holy Spirit are hindered. The Holy Spirit, although indwelling us, indwelling us is not free to accomplish his work in the life of the believer when he's grieved and when he is quenched. Think about it this way. When you flip the light switch up in your home, you release all the electrical power that was being held back by the switch being turned off. And when you turn off the Holy Spirit, you turn off your power source. You turn off your power source. The power is sitting there in your life waiting to be released, but you have the switch on off. My brothers and sisters, release the spirit to have full reign in your life. And oh, what great things God can accomplish in your life. Oh, what great things you can do to bring glory to God because you have released the power that is within you and you can do all of the things that God purposed for you to do. And you would see his amazing grace released into a darkened world that needs the light of the power that we have within us. Oh, my brothers and sisters, don't sit back and hold back the refreshing waters of the Spirit of God that's dwelling inside of you that can refresh the dried up spirits and dried up lives uh, that we come in contact with, that can refresh the broken hearts that are suffering in despair and desperation. We can release the fresh, sweet water of the Lord by releasing the power of the Holy Spirit that he's given us. Turn the switch to own. Release the power of God in this world out of your life. Galatians 5 and 16 says, This I say, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Holy Spirit is our spiritual guide, and he guides us through dangers seen and unseen. I think I'm going to close with this. Acts 1 and 8, I'm going to repeat, repeat it. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the world. God, our Father, God, our Lord, first gave us Jesus Christ as our Savior to work miracles in our life. He came down through 42 generations born in Bethlehem of Judea, wrapped in swaddling clothing, laid in the heart of a manger. He came as the sacrificial lamb to save us from our sins. Mean men put nails in his hands and spikes in his feet and hung him on an old rugged cross. He hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour, to the sun refused to shine, and 
and the earthquakes in divers places. Then he laid his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died for our sin. He redeemed us. He reconciled us. And early on that Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He ascended back into heaven, sitting on the right hand of the Father. But in his word, he said, I will not leave you comfortless, that I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to dwell within you. And didn't he do it? Didn't he do it? On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and he dwelled within man. See, our father is not a man that he should lie. He did, does exactly what he said. We didn't, didn't have, or we don't have, amen, him with us physically, but we have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling inside of us. He used to come upon us, but now he dwells inside of us. We have the power of of God's spirit within us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you have power to make a difference in this world that use it for the glory of God. And what God says is not going to stop with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that we have power with inside of us. But he said that I'm coming back to deliver you out of this sinful world, and that's going to happen at the rapture. He's going to stop in midair. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and those who are still alive shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And we shall all rise and go home to be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. You have power with inside of you to dwell in this God, in this God-given world and all of the evil that we see within it. He gives us the power to make it through the time that he's coming back for us. But we just have to utilize the power that's within inside of us. May God bless you and mod. And may God keep you, use the power of the Holy Spirit to help change lives, to strengthen yourself, and to glorify God. May God bless you, and may God keep you, is my prayer.